This is a slightly different video to a lot of the others that I've done in that it's not a tutorial for Pico 8 specifically. It's really just looking at an interesting function or set of functions that you can use in Pico 8 to give your animations a little bit more um, realism. If we look at this particular demo here, which is really nicely put together, we can see a character jumping. But what you can see before the character jumps is, is a moment of anticipation. So if I take it just back a little bit to here, you can see how the character coils backwards before jumping up. And this sort of motion gives a little bit of realism to your program. Now we can do the same sort of thing in Pico 8. If we look at this little program I've written here, up at the top there's a green dot. And this green dot can move across the screen when I press a button. So if I press a button, there goes the dot. But it's a very boring motion. It's a completely linear motion. And what I want to talk about today are easing functions. These are functions that allow objects to move a little bit more interestingly. The way they work is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to sort of draw a little diagram here to show you what's going on. If you think about a movement, time is along here and your position, let's say in this instance, your X location is here. The top, this green movement, movement here, moves in a linear fashion. In other words, as time moves along, the X value increases. But this is actually a very unrealistic way of moving things. Much more realistic is to have a movement where, for example, it moves rather rapidly and as it gets towards the end, slows down. Or we could have a movement where it starts off quite slowly, goes rapidly and slows again. We could even have a movement where, for example, we overshoot and then finally level out. So there are all sorts of different um, methods of moving between one location here and another location here, which will give your projects just that little bit more realism and, and be a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Now what I've done is I've bundled together all of these functions into a little project here, which has got some easing functions all in, and you can download the cart from the Pico8 website if you want to get hold of the bits and pieces and there's a little explanation there and the cart itself has loads of information inside it and if you have a look at the cart itself and run it you can see it just demonstrates some various different um, easing functions that have been pre-programmed if you look at the code for this particular um, cartridge when you can download there's a function called easing and you can pass that function four variables, which are the important variables for easing and the ones I'm going to talk about, and a style. So you could pass it zero and it will just do a linear ease. That is, it just returns a straight line easing. You can look at some ones to do with a quadratic. That is, um, that the location or the x value or whatever it is that you're changing varies with the square. There's a cubic one where you're varying with the cube, so you get a slightly more pronounced effect in these. There's some circular ones where they um, vary in a, in a much more sinusoidal fashion. And then there are some special ones here. I, I've put a bounce in. So, oh, sorry, it's called a bounce out, but I've put it in the code, sorry. So that one is one where the, the motion moves up and bounces when it reaches the end. There's an elastic out where it overshoots before leveling out. And there's an elastic in-out where you get that anticipation movement down before it moves up and arrives. And you can run all of those and, and test it just by typing run. If you don't pass a value for style in this code, then by default, you just get a linear easing. I've also wrapped all these functions individually in a second tab. So if you've decided that you're just going to use a cubic in out function, you could, in order to save some tokens down here, you could just copy the cubic in out function and call that instead. And in that case, you just call T, B, C and D. You don't have to worry about calling style. So let's have a look at how you can actually incorporate this into some code. So this particular bit of code here that, that we had and was running is one that demonstrates this sort of thing. So when I press Z, I get a linear movement. But if I press X instead, 
I get an eased function. There you can see an ease. So it just slows before it finishes and gives a little bit more pleasing effect. So the code for all of this, if we have a look, I've written various bits of code because I have to draw things on the screen and update and various bits and pieces and I have to respond to the mouse button and bits and bobs. But there are some important bits. The first is I've pasted in the entire easing function. So I've taken the easy fun easing function from the um, Pico 8 site and I've pasted the entire of that in so that I can test all the different easing functions to see how it's going to work. I've got my ball, this here EX is the easing ball and it's X location. Okay, so when the code actually starts, the easing ball is located at location 15, X15. And then down here, I've got some actual values for the easing. And these are the values that are really important. The first thing to say is that if we imagine how easing is going to work, as I showed before, if we draw a graph, like this with t along there t starts at naught and ends at a location d okay that's this d here so it's starting at zero and ending at, at d and this is how many update cycles effectively we're going to need to get from the beginning to the end of our movement okay we also have um, in this value i'm changing x so i'm going to put x here X starts from B, okay, and this entire distance here is a measured by C. So this point here is B plus C. Okay, so that's quite important. You're going to give it these different values. So you can see here that mine is going to move 95 squares. That's not it. It's not going to end at 95. It's going to move 95 squared. So if you remember, I'm starting at 15 there. And because I'm moving 95 squares, that means I'm going to end up at, if my math is correct, 110. That's 15 plus 95. So I'm actually going to end up at 110. 110 up there. OK. And the easing function will just return me a value of where the x is currently located for any particular time. So if I was to do a linear one like that, then when I'm halfway through my um, full duration, if I was to read that up there, if I could actually get my um, thing aligned properly, sorry, okay, then it's going to return this value here, okay? But obviously I'm not so interested in um, a linear function. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of my linear function and instead I'm going to put in a different one. And maybe I'm going to go for a function like that. So that one, as you can see, to begin with, is going to cover a lot of the x. By the time I'm at 50% here, I've covered almost all of it. And then in the final 50% of the time, I'm only going to cover this small distance here. And the function itself takes care of all of this. So if I get rid of that code, the function itself will take care of exactly how that works with all the code that's sitting in here. Okay, so for example, for a circular in out, there's various bits of code that will run that will sort it all out and it will return to you a value showing you where this particular object is for your given time if you said a duration and a distance to travel or a change. So in my actual code, I've got some various code for pressing the button and bits and pieces, but the most important one is here. If our button is moving, okay, I've kept a, a record of whether the object is moving or not. If it is moving, I increment the time and I call the easing function. So I call it by giving it the new value of time, the beginning value, which if you remember up here, we set to the X value at the start. OK, the beginning value here, the change, which we've set already, and the duration, which we set already. And I've called number five, which, as I say, if we scroll up here, is a cubic ease out. Number five, style is five, a cubic ease out. And so I run that until T is greater than D. In other words, the time has increased beyond the duration, at which point I set moving to false and the code won't work anymore. And just for completeness, back here, if 
the moving is false, in other words, it's not moving, and I press button 5, then I set the moving to true. I set the original value for EX to 15, time is naught, and so on. Okay, so all the different bits and pieces are set, and away we go. All right, so the whole thing just runs again and again and again. So if I run it, if I press escape and run, you can see this um, cubic easing in process. I could change it, for example. So I could think in here, I could think, right, I'm going to have a cubic in out, which is number six. So we come in here, change that one to six, and run it. And this is a cubic in out. So it's slow, fast, slow. Okay, which is quite a pleasing method of moving things. Probably one I'll try and use at some point because I quite like that one. There are some others as well, obviously. Some of the, the special ones are quite interesting. So, for example, there's a bounce, 10. So just by changing this number to 10, you can instantly experiment and have a bounce. There it goes, bouncing towards the end. It's a really nice um, effect. So simple, really. Um, all the coding's been done. You just have to select the one you want. We could try overshooting. Number 11 is the, um, where am I? Sorry, come down here, bounce out, is the elastic out. That's the one where it overshoots. So if I run and do that one, you can see it go on beyond. Okay, this is um, seen in a lot of user interface design, especially on um, smartphones and bits and pieces like that, where you've got that sort of snap scrolling at the bottom. And you get a little movement like that. So that's a classic movement. And finally, number, um, come down, 11 to 12. Number 12 is the elastic in-out. That's the one that gives us a little bit of anticipation. So if I come into here and put 12, okay, and run it, then this one has that little bit of movement beforehand. So sometimes that's quite useful for something, just to build that anticipation before the movement works. So as I say, the code for the using functions is on the Pico8 website. I'll put a link in the description below the video as well. It's really simple to use. You can incorporate it into any project you want, and it just ha gives you that little bit extra realism and interest in moving objects around the screen rather than just doing it in a linear fashion. Happy programming.